Out of all the video game franchises out there, one in particular holds a special place in my heart, Sonic the Hedgehog. I've been very familiar with the blue dude since I was introduced to him back in the early 2000s, and despite the rocky path that he had to go through during that time period, it didn't stop me from admiring the wonder of the characters and the world that was created. And with the Sonic the Hedgehog movie being praised by fans and doing tremendously at the box office, I thought this would be a good time to go down memory lane and play all of the Sonic the Hedgehog games in the main platformer series. Now keep in mind this isn't going to be a marathon in which I play all of the games one after the other, but rather consider it as a mini retrospective side series while I work on other stuff. Also while I did say that I'm going to be looking at all of the Sonic games in the main series, there are a few exceptions in which I think I should address and that being the only games in which I will not be covering are the games released for the Game Gear or Knuckles Chaotix for the 32X. The reason being is that I don't have the necessary consoles or the tech needed to play them. Yes, I know there are ways to play those games through like compilations or emulators, but I like to be authentic as possible. Plus, I won't be able to cover the Game Gear games through Sonic Adventure DX, the reason being because one, you need to unlock them first, which is just going to take too long. And two, the version of SA1 I will be covering is the Steam version of the Dreamcast mod, and you can't unlock those games in that version either. So with that said, let's head into the first two games of the main series, Sonic the Hedgehog and Sonic the Hedgehog 2, released for the Mega Drive slash Genesis. Now, since there are probably a lot of you who already know the history to the creation to Sonic himself, I won't spend too much time on it, but I figured I should give a brief run through anyway. During the late 80s, Sega wanted to create a new mascot that would be able to rival the likes of Mario. Designs were shifted left and right until Naruto Oshima's design of a blue, super fast hedgehog was chosen. And so, after giving him shoes that resembled Michael Jackson and Santa Claus, as well as giving him the attitude of Bill Clinton, Son the Hedgehog was born, known to be one of the most iconic characters in the video game industry. Whew, well, now that we've got the brief backstory out of the way, let's get into the actual game itself, starting with... Oh, god damn it, not this stage again! Okay, you know what? It is the first game to use it, so I shouldn't be too negative about it, but let's just move on. Like most games of that period, the plot is pretty simple and non-existent, where a mad scientist by the name of Dr. Eggman, and yes, I know the games refer to him as Robotnik, but his original Japanese name is Eggman, so that's just how I'm rolling with it, <laughs> has kidnapped all the woodland critters of South Island and turned them into robots for his own personal deeds. And so it's up to Sonic the Hedgehog to take down the Mad Doctor and rescue the critters. So we start things off with the one and only Green Hill Zone, a natural paradise containing grassy landscapes, blue lakes and weird checkerboard soil that sometimes collapses. It is also home to one of Sonic's most iconic set pieces, the loop-de-loops. Right off the bat, this game shows how differently it functions compared to most platformers, where speed is the ultimate reward and can only be achieved by the physics and terrain. This can be greatly enhanced by using one of Sonic's most well-known moves, the spin attack, that can be performed after getting enough speed through running or going down slopes. And let me tell you, there is nothing more satisfying than watching Sonic blazing through a set piece, all thanks to your understanding of the level design. However, not every zone has this same level of quality, and a lot more focused on the platforming aspect, giving very little chances of actual speed. This includes the likes of Marble Zone and Labyrinth Zone, both of which contain slow segments to maneuver, a lot of dickheaded enemy placement because you don't have enough reaction time, and in the case of Labyrinth Zone, which is underwater, it can feel really sluggish and tedious. Not to mention, you have to keep an eye out for air bubbles since Sonic can't breathe underwater, and sometimes it can be very frantic to find some, and on the rare occasions, there aren't any at all and you end up drowning anyway. Thankfully, the music in the zone makes up for the occasional frustration, in fact. There's probably a good time to shift to what has become a staple for Sonic, is that no matter the game's quality, you can be damn sure that the music is going to be something great. For the most part. If not the title theme, then pretty much anyone will recognise the tune to Green Hill, even if they haven't played a Sonic game. 
Whilst we're on the positive side, it is relieving to know that the rest of the zones are an absolute blast to go through. This includes the likes of Spring Yard Zone, one of my personal favourites, and Starlight Zone, where the amount of speed you can get is just astonishing, and also made me realise that not only are there a lot more branching pathways in this game than I thought, but I actually cleared one of the acts by going underneath the path that contained the goalpost, which was weird. Speaking of weird, it's practically become a tradition in the 2D games to involve chaos emeralds, magical stones in which Eggman is after for diabolical reasons, and you have a chance of collecting these gems by finishing a stage with at least 50 rings and jumping into a giant ring at the end of the stage. Your objective in this trippy ass dimension is to guide Sonic through these mazes that contain a lot of obstacles until you reach the chaos emerald. Now, to be honest, for the longest time, these were my least favourite special stages, but I was actually quite surprised by how many I actually managed to collect before the end of my first run, and by collecting all six, not seven, you don't really get anything aside from a few extra flowers during the final scene. Overall, going back to the original Sonic the Hedgehog was actually a lot more enjoyable experience than I thought it would be, considering the uh, polished fixes and added features we would gain in future games. This was also the first time I actually beaten any of the Mega Drive classics, though I have to make a confession. Despite being a Sonic nut for some time, that doesn't mean I'm a complete expert in some of the earlier titles, which is why when I got a game over in Labyrinth Zone, I discovered that since I'm playing this off the Steam version, I had the ability to rewind my gameplay, and so I used this feature to avoid starting over from the very beginning. I know, I know, I feel guilty for using this feature, so tell you what, whenever I get around to Sonic 3 & Knuckles, I won't use this feature, I promise. At least in that game, you had a save system that allowed you to start from the beginning of the zone you died in. But before that, let's tackle to what many consider to be one of the best, if not the best Sonic game for the longest time, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. And I can see why, since out of the two games, Sonic 2 basically took what worked in the previous game and tweaked what didn't, as well as adding new features that would also become a staple to the franchise. The most obvious being Sonic's best buddy, Miles Tails Prower. Now, whilst there is no secret to anyone who knows the little guy, is that his most significant ability is being able to fly for a short periods of time using his tails. You can't actually do this, despite the fact that you see him doing this whenever you play as Sonic. So, as of this game, he's practically an alternate skin, with very little changes from what I've seen. Another new prominent feature is the Spin Dash. By crouching and pressing the jump button, Sonic or Tails will start charging up and once released, they can launch off immediately whilst in ball form. This move is such a huge lifesaver whenever you need to gain that extra speed as soon as possible, and so any time it felt like a drag trying to gain that kind of speed from the previous game is practically gone. As for levels themselves, there are a lot more than there were in Sonic 1, most of which have been made longer with even more branching pathways, and pretty much the whole game itself has been given a graphical improvement, featuring a lot more detail and a higher saturation, so the whole game just looks way more colourful. Some of my personal favourites include, of course, Chemical Plant Zone for its accelerating paths across pipes, Casino Night for its late night Vegas load with the neon lights, Mystic Cave with its eerie atmosphere and the fact that this zone's boss fight looks a lot like that mech Eggman used in Sonic Mania Adventures. And surprisingly, I got quite a bit of enjoyment from Metropolis Zone, mostly because of the music for this zone, alongside the entire game's soundtrack as a whole, is just incredible. In my opinion, tops the original Sonic the Hedgehog soundtrack in every way. However, one aspect of the game that I felt has made a downfall are the special stages when collecting the Chaos Emeralds. Unlike Sonic 1, you need to cross a checkpoint pole with at least 50 rings and jump into the sparkles circling on the top. This time, the special stage is laid out as a half pipe in which you need to collect a certain number of rings before crossing the checkpoint, and by clearing all three, you're rewarded with a Chaos Emerald at the end. This iteration of a special stage would go on to be used throughout a number of future Sonic games, but for what reason made it so popular just baffles me because, for this iteration anyway, it is a major pain in the ass for several reasons. 1. Graphically I can see it being quite revolutionary for the time, but in today's age, especially when viewing on a big monitor, it just seems so disorienting so it's not so easy to follow whenever it starts twisting and turning, hence why they updated it in the Krishna Whitehead version for mobile devices. 2. While it starts off not being too difficult, 
The later stages require a crap ton of rings and with the inclusion of bombs as obstacles, can be incredibly frustrating as you practically need to master the layout to make sure that you don't miss any rings along the way. And third, what may be the main reason why it's such a pain is that when you play as both Sonic and Tails, both characters have their own separate ring count, which you think could be useful, but Tails has a bit of a delay when moving, so it's very likely that he'll just end up crashing into the bombs and lose all your rings to meet that target. Thank god I had that rewind function, otherwise it would have been impossible from my standards. Thankfully, while the process of collecting the emeralds can be quite miserable, your reward for getting all of them completely makes up for it, as once you collect 50 rings and simply jump, you transform into Super Sonic, yet another staple of the franchise in which you become invincible, run faster, and jump higher. The only catch is it runs off the number of rings you have, which goes down like a time limit, and once you're all out, you transform back. But still, experiencing Super Sonic in Sonic 2 for the first time was an absolute blast, trying to speed through the levels as fast as possible, without needing to worry about enemy or spike damage. As we approach to near the end of the game, things start to get a little more interesting, as we suddenly see Sonic on top of a plane, Tails is flying, and take part in a small section taking out badniks in the sky whilst chasing down a huge flying battleship Eggman is piloting. Thankfully, Tails follows whenever you move or jump, so it's practically impossible to accidentally fall off. However, once we catch up to the Wing Fortress, the plane is shot which forces Sonic to bail and finish the job himself. The biggest obstacle you'll have to face is the possibility of falling to your death, since there is very little floor space, and on some occasions, if you aren't close enough, you'll end up missing and lose a life. Thankfully, that didn't happen to me often, and eventually Tails manages to return, now fitted with a new booster, allowing Sonic to catch a ride onto Eggman's ship towards his ultimate station, the Death Egg. Here is where you'll face the last two bosses of the game, Mecha Sonic and the Death Egg Robot, all in which there are no rings in sight, so you'll need to be extra cautious to avoid losing too many lives. On the topic of being able to rewind, I tried to beat these two bosses without using that feature, I really did, but I guess it turns out I'm just not the complete Sonic expert just yet. Well anyway, after dealing enough damage to the Doctor, the Death Egg station starts blowing up, with Sonic just barely escaping. And so, we come to the ending of the game that shows us one last segment with Tails, alongside all the critters, watching the Death Egg being destroyed, followed by Tails setting off on the plane, which then cuts to Sonic falling back to Earth, but is then saved by Tails, accompanied by some flickies. And this shot alone just further signifies the friendship between Sonic and Tails, not to mention the music track to accompany the scene is just wonderful. Now it's worth mentioning that if you manage to get out the Chaos Emeralds before reaching the Death Egg, you have an alternate ending with Sonic transforming into Super Sonic, who then falls back to Earth safely, and then flying next to Tails afterwards. So if you look at this ending, character-wise, it almost makes Tails kind of worthless, which is a little upsetting. Hence why, out of these two, I like to consider the original ending, the one without the emeralds, is the true, official ending to this game's story. And that's Sonic the Hedgehog 2, ladies and gentlemen. What more can I say that hasn't already been said? In pretty much almost every aspect, Sonic 2 is a superior game compared to Sonic 1. The presentation is a step up in both visuals and music, the spin dash helps tremendously when reaching tough to reach places as well as quickly picking up speed when moving, and the overall level design is just more expanded and sophisticated. Not to mention, with the addition of Tails, the franchise shows it's capable of greatly expanding both the lore of the Sonic world, as well as gameplay with him being able to do extra hits, and also act as a second player in multiplayer mode. Even if the mode itself looks kind of ugly and squished, and also the level selection is greatly limited. Still, that doesn't negate the fact that Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is considered by many to be one of the greatest installments in the franchise, something I can wholeheartedly agree with. Like the original game, it doesn't take very long to finish, but it leaves you completely satisfied with what it has to offer. And for better or worse, future games after this will continue to expand in both size and new gameplay ideas, which is something that I'll be discovering when the time's right. So all in all, my final ratings for these two games are as follows. For the original Sonic the Hedgehog, I give it 4 out of 5 stars. And for Sonic the Hedgehog 2, it gets a complete 5 out of 5 stars.
So, next time we delve into the game world of Silent Hedgehog, we're actually going to sidestep to an installment that was made for an attachment for the Mega Drive slash Genesis, and is over the last few years, has been gaining a lot more recognition and praise. That being Sonic CD. However, this doesn't mean I'm completely done talking about the Blue Blur as of yet, as before I move on to talking about other entertainment franchises that I just adore, I'm actually going to be giving you my thoughts and opinions on the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. And considering I've had quite a bit of history and experiences whilst I was in development, that I think is most definitely worth talking about. But until then, thank you all so much for watching, and take care.